Hey yo, what up? It's your boy Reason, aka Bump the Cheese Up, aka No Sleep, aka Do It Like I Can, aka is a friend of mine. But right now, you are watching Sink and Chew on Black Nation TV. What up, how you doing, Black Nation people? Welcome to another dope episode of Sink and Chew with myself, Sean Nichols. Today we bring you another, as usual, awesome episode. We are hanging out with Reason. Yes, Reason in the studio. But before we hang out with Reason, let's go check out the streets. Because you know Black Nation, we're always out here. Cool. It's about now. We are the movement. Catch our weekly show. Ashley meets interior architecture with I'm Obsession. Fastness brings you urban expression of the youth culture. Conversations driven by the love of music with your girl Q. Then get front row seats and zoom into our adventures on Thursdays. Don't miss our weekly update. We are Black Nation. Pop. Political. Like real, like real, like real, real talk, like real talk after this, like I, yo, I deserve my five mics. I deserve everybody to give me five mics. I deserve everybody to come up to me and bow and be like, yo, we respect, we hear you. Here's the crown, B. Take it. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is like, these are bars, B. Like, bars. Like, bars. Damn, I said her and I, whatever happened to us wasn't worth a try. It wasn't worth it for you to sleep, hurt inside. Cause if love was God, then you'll know that I'm the perfect guy. Working on the perfect life. Healthy kids and a perfect wife. Perfect house, I'm in a- Cause you know we are rolling with Mr. Reason in the studio. And um, yeah, I'm so happy. So uh, thank you so much for joining us, Reason. Uh, welcome to Sick in Tune. Let's talk about the come up. Let's talk about, let's kind of reminisce on it a little bit and go back to the come up and how, how challenging it was. What were some of the challenges that you faced, you know, trying to be taken seriously? Sure, the come up. Yes. Damn. I often think that I had quite a spoiled come up, actually. Like I had quite a privileged come up. You know? How so? Because uh, I think, I met Pro Work when I was 17. Yeah. I was still in high school. Uh -huh. So, like, after you meet, I mean, it's not like I met him and he gave me a career and everything, but what, I, what he did was he, he introduced me to the right people. Okay. He introduced me to people that could teach me about recording music. Yeah. He introduced me to people that could teach me about uh, 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 releasing music, yeah. shooting videos, sending music out to radio stations, so on and so forth. He basically introduced me to people who were in the industry that could actually offer you know, some service in terms of how things work. You know? yeah. um, more often than not, some people just go in and they find out as they're going in what's like, oh, so there's invoices to be had, or there's tax and there's this and there's that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like I had a bit of a, 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 a lucky I'll come up because while I was coming up and while I was doing my rounds, doing the battles, doing the free shows, you know, trying to be known in Soweto, trying to be known in the Val, trying to be known in Tenvisa, trying to be known in Guatemala, trying to be known in Gugumetu. Yeah. With all those things, there was a bit of knowledge that was imparted, you know, that was thrown in, you know, from the time I was about 17, you know. Because from when I was 17, I got to spend time with Optical Illusion touring. What? I got to, you know what I'm saying? I yeah. got to hang out with Proverb. I mean, just after high school, I got to, you know, be the hype man uh, for Proverb. I, mean, yeah. I was a hype man for Tabby. You know, I was, just, I was yeah. opening for Zabs. Yeah. So there was a whole bunch of things that were happening, like, outside of 
you know, my actual hustle, you know what I'm saying, those actual links that I have with people who are already inside. But I think the hardest part was being a part of those guys. I think, you know, crossing into the industry is yeah. really the hard part. Like, yeah. it's, it's, it's so hard. In fact, those are the two hardest parts, is going in and staying in, because it's easy to come out. You know, there's so many people already in the industry. Um, so forcing your way in is hard. Yeah. And staying in there without getting kicked out is also hard. Seeing hip hop or whatever, create, create the creative space, like develop this world is today. Right. You being a part of that, right. you being a part of the people who drive culture, in right. my opinion. Right. What do you think people understand hip hop and creativity to be and to serve in 2014? What do you see in terms of how people consume hip hop and art? You see his influence, you know, um, and I think that's that's all people have been able to see with everything from the world. And I say that um, in as much as I say, you know, soccer's a sport. You know, soccer's a sport, um, but the effect that it has on people is not just about the sport. It, it's, it's beyond that. You know, there's the business, there's the culture, there's the spirit, there's the, there's the feeling, there's the, you know, um, the motivation, you know. Um, there's a lot of business around, outside of, you know, any team that's playing on the game. Um, I'll give you an example. If you look at Manchester United playing in Old Trafford, and the amount of money that Manchester as a city makes just from that game, uh, the amount of happiness people have when they get home, the frustration, you know, uh, fights that happen, riots that can happen because of the game, things that can happen because of just one small game. And I feel it's the same thing with hip hop where for a very long time, it was a culture that people were a part of. It was just a culture that people were a part of. And only people with hip hop wanted to buy it. Um, yes. yeah. And that number was growing. And then it grew so much that it started influencing people who were not into hip hop. So you find that people who are not into hip hop love hip hop. You know? um, and it has everything to do with the influence. Um, Is there anything that people never seem to really want to find out about where you like? You're always asking me this, but why don't you ever want to find out about that? Is, is, there, is there something like that? I just have a general opinion. Yeah. I, I mean, I personally have a general opinion around, um, especially with things like interviews. Okay. Uh, especially, actually, in fact, the only thing is interviews. But I feel like they are interviews. You know what I mean? Like I'm, like I'm applying for a job. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Whereas I'm of the belief that interviews are much more comfortable and much better when you get more out of a person when you have conversations. But I never really know what kind of conversation you want to have, you know? And plus there's a lot of conversations that you have and you feel like you've had them before. Which matters in terms of like when people take in content, especially our content as artists, it's like people always look for something new. They need you to find something new or find a new conversation to have, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So many things happened in our lives in the last year or two. Um, and there's so many things that have happened since you wanted to have this conversation that no one has actually asked about. You know what I'm saying? So I, th I think that's a lot of things with just the execution of the information. Because the thing is, someone's going to get to this interview. If they find something in this interview that I've already touched on before with someone else, they can easily skip this interview. You know what I'm saying? Which for me is like, that's why some people are pedantic and they they, they picks about it. They, they, they ask for the question before they come to the interview. I mean, I don't. If you were to articulate like your impact to describe it, how would you describe it at this stage in your life? <laughs> I, I can tell you what I've seen, you know, what I've seen people react to, what I've seen people buy into when it comes to me as a brand is uh, the raps. You know, uh, it seems to be the raps and bars, you know, um, which, is a, which is a thing, you know, because 80% of the struggle was to be accepted for the bars. Okay. You know? yeah. And once you First are accepted, yeah, it's yes. to be accepted for the bars. And after being accepted for the bars, there's the reality of keeping the bars accepted. You know what I'm saying? Like, how do I kick bars that my dad can listen to? You know, how do I kick bars that my aunt can listen to? 
one that you can listen to. And a girl in Sway and a girl in Kitchen is to at the same time. You know Thank you so much.